Give me the power to create a fever, and I shall cure any disease. Those famous words spoken 2,000 years ago by Hippocrates, the founder of Western medicine. It is now what medical professionals call hyperthermia therapy, literally heating up cancer cells to target tumors. Just last month, Good For Utah's Nadia Crow and photojournalist John Uhlberg traveled to New Orleans for a conference on hyperthermia. They joined Pyrexar, a Utah company that builds machines to administer hyperthermia treatments. Throughout the week in a four-part series, we will learn about hyperthermia, its success, its challenges. Tonight, Good For Utah's Nadia Crow begins with the history of turning the heat up on cancer. Historians declare the first written reference to hyperthermia was found in Egyptian scrolls 5,000 years ago. According to cancer.gov about hyperthermia, research has shown that high temperatures can damage and kill cancer cells, usually with minimal injury to normal tissues. Basically, this is just using uh, simple uh, high fever temperatures in localized areas uh, to treat these tumors. So it's a very natural process to the body. What's old is new again. Knowledge discovered by the ancient Egyptians now used in modern medicine. Salt Lake City and the University of Utah has actually been uh, very much involved in hyperthermia in the early years. Take a look at these images, a brief history of the hyperthermia machines built as far back as 1987. But physicist Jerron Van Vroom says he built his first hyperthermia machine in the late 1970s. The first of all was uh, a system for superficial hyperthermia to go to have extended fields uh, very no, uh, close to, to, together so that, we can, uh, so that we can have a higher quality of treatment. Dr. Van Roon then built a second machine for deep hyperthermia before finally buying machines like these in the early 1980s. And he says he saw results with one patient in particular. Well, she was not, not in a good shape. She could not do normal cycling, normal activities. And with at the end of the treatment, she was able to redo that all again. She went disappeared uh, and everyone was happy. Some success stories sparked more trials. Just take a look at the ever developing technology and hyperthermia machines. But overall, Dr. Zelko Vojaskovic at the University of Maryland Medical Center says the enthusiasm quickly died down with bad clinical trials. A perception at the time was that hyperthermia was not effective and um, after that, there was a decline, especially in the United States, in the use of hyperthermia. And hey, Nadia joins me now live, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said in your report, hyperthermia has been around for a long time. Absolutely. I've never heard of it being used in, in Utah or any news of it along the Wasatch Front. That, well, it's not. There's a good reason for that because it's not being used at the Huntsman Cancer Institute or at Intermountain Medical Center. We see it being used in other countries with clinical trials and evidence that it works, but it's underutilized in the U.S. and not at all here along the Wasatch Front. Incredible story. You've got four parts to this. What can we expect over the next several days. Well, today we talked about the history, so why we're seeing some of the challenges now. Tomorrow we'll embark on how it works, so how we're using that technology to heat up those cancer cells. And we'll also hear from a patient who says it's been the reason why he's still living. It's extended his life. Um, and then we'll talk about why we're not seeing it here along the Wasatch Front. That's the big question, and there, there's an answer. We talked to Huntsman Cancer Institute. We talked to Intermountain Medical Center. They share why they don't believe in hyperthermia therapy. So many therapy. of us are affected by cancer. An intriguing story. Thank right. you very much. Thanks, Good Randy. job. Thanks.